I want to share with you a story. A story about my friend and my hero and my mentor. And hopefully you can use some, some takeaways in this. And, uh, and I want you thinking about two things. What's your passion? What is it that you love to do? And what's your legacy? How are you going to be remembered when it's all said and done? Did you matter? Did you make a difference? You know, I'm a storyteller. I write lots of biographies. I write three books a year. And I'm convinced everybody has a story. So I have a kind of a crazy full circle story and I'm going to share it with you as I dive into my program about Herbie and the Miracle. And I want you thinking about your story because your code, as we talked about yesterday, what you do, not who you are, it's all about your story, where you come from, as you think about values and integrity and ethics and accountability. So I want you thinking about these things. For me, this is where it all begins. The booming metropolis of Fairmont. And uh, as a kid in Fairmont, there's not a whole heck of a lot to do. So I was into playing sports. That was pretty much all we did. And I had a blast. It was, it was awesome. A anything we could do, I was into. Well, as a 10-year-old, I got sucked into watching hockey. The miracle on ice. I was, oh, this was awesome. I loved gopher hockey. And half the team, which was led by Coach Brooks, they were kids from Minnesota. So I was invested. And now, if you know anything about hockey, and many of you do, Southern Minnesota, this is not hockey country, okay? This is wrestling and basketball country. It's not like Rozo and Warroad where they actually pull kids out of the womb by their skate blades. This is a little different. <laughs> so the first thing I did was I said, I want to go to the Herb Brooks hockey camp, which is over at the Shattuck School in Faribault. And I went and it was awesome. And I was what you'd call an ankle bender. I was one of these guys out there. And I remember one day Herbie came up to me, he put his arm around me and he said, way to go, Ross. He knew my name because it was written with white tape across my forehead. And he said, way to go, Ross. You're a really hard worker. Wow, that was really cool. I, I remember that. 30 years later, I still remember that moment. And, and uh, I actually won an award at the camp. And if you know anything about sports, you know that whoever wins this award sucks the most. And uh, <laughs> I had nowhere to go but up. I wound up taking this FIED course. It was a one-credit PE class called Introduction to Ice Hockey. And this was the class that the players taught to get their scholarships, right? Eventually, I became friends with some of the players. And I joined a fraternity, and they'd come to my frat parties, and we got to know them. And, and uh, later on that year, they said, hey, you know, you're not bad. You should walk on. Like, come on, are you kidding me? I'm from Fairmont. I said, no, you're a big guy. We'll, well, come on, we'll root for you. We'll help you. So that summer, I trained hard and came back, and I, I just took a huge leap of faith. And I, I walked on to the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. You know, one day in practice, Coach Wu came up to me and said, kid, I love your passion. I love your work ethic, but this ain't happening. I got to let you go. I got to cut you. I was devastated. I really was. I mean, I was, that was my dream. It would have been so amazing. But it turned out there was another job opening on the team. It wasn't quite as sexy as All-American defensemen, but it was close. It was the team mascot, Goldie the Gopher. Yeah, there were two criteria for the job. You had to be a decent skater and a complete moron. And apparently I fit on both accounts and I, I got the gig and, uh, and I had a lot of fun. And I got in a lot of trouble. Uh, apparently it's not okay to throw craft singles at the Wisconsin band. Who knew? <laughs> I, but I had a ball. And uh, as a fifth year senior and dad's cash is drying up fast, <clears throat> a, a publisher approaches me and says, hey kid, we want to write a book about all the trouble you've gotten into. I'm oh, like, well, cool, if you're a mascot, that's quite a compliment. But other than my grandmother, I don't know who's going to want to read your book. So I thought, hey, you know, this, this might be a good idea. I might be onto something here. What if I wrote a book about the history of gopher hockey from Goldie's point of view? That'd be kind of neat. So uh, I called mom and dad. I said, mom, dad, uh, about my graduate school money. <clears throat> I remember that conversation. There was a lot of swearing. I remember the words failure, disappointment quite well. Everything else is kind of a blur. But uh, as the youngest of three boys, this was exactly the encouragement I needed to completely do the opposite of what my parents wanted. So I was going to be an author and publisher. Hey, <laughs> now trust me, I knew nothing about writing books. I knew nothing about reading books. But hey, I felt more than qualified to write the definitive history of hockey in Minnesota. So I dove in and I started interviewing players. And one of the first phone calls I got was from Herb Brooks. Ross? Wow, it's Herb Brooks. Heard about your book. What can I do to help? I thought, well, maybe I'll meet him and sign an autograph. And he remembered me, Ross, from hockey camp, right? So we got together. I spent the whole day with him. It was amazing. He opened up his Rolodex. Who can, we, who can you talk to? What can I do? And it was amazing. And it'd be the beginning of a lifelong friendship. And since then, I've somehow been able to write almost 50 books now. Now, it's 2002. Herbie and I have become friends. I'm writing books full time. Herb called me one day and he said, Ross, I've thought about it. I got this big offer and uh, I'm turning it down. I've decided I'm ready to write my book. And I've been approached by some people from the New York Times and ESPN, and, and I want you to write my book. Wow. It was like God had just called me. It was like, are you kidding me? This, it was larger than life. I was, it was amazing. So for the next nine months, I got to work with my hero. 
my mentor, Herbie, and we spent all this time together working on his book, and it was just amazing. Now, flash forward to the weekend of August 11, 2003, later that year. Herb and I were up playing golf at the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame Celebrity Golf Classic in Bawabek, up in the Iron Range at Giants Ridge Golf Course. Beautiful course. After the 11th hole that day, Herb had to say goodbye. He had a speaking engagement in Chicago with a big pharmaceutical company. Everyone said their goodbyes. We finished off the round of golf, had a wonderful day. I turned on my cell phone and I saw that it was maxed out with messages. So something was going on. And then I turned on the radio and I saw that every station, there was some very serious talk going on. And we were listening and listening. And, and that's when I heard the news, that Herbie didn't make it. He was killed in a car accident driving home that day. And if you're a hockey fan, that's kind of where you were when Kennedy got shot. We came upon the crash site. And I remember seeing some of these, some crosses with gopher hats and jerseys. And I thought, I thought, what can I do? Herb Brooks inspired me. There's a big difference between motivation and inspiration. I could motivate any one of you in the room right now. I could hold a knife to your throat and get you to do whatever I want you to do. But to inspire you, that's magic. That's Oprah material, right? Herb Brooks inspired me. I didn't ask for it. It just happened. So I decided to write a couple books. America's Coach, Remembering Herbie, Create the Herb Brooks Foundation. Proudly, I'm now president of this wonderful organization that gives back to grow hockey. Because that was Herbie's passion, to grow hockey in Fairmont, and South Dakota, North Dakota, and Texas, and California. Get everyone drinking our Kool-Aid, because that's our passion. What's your passion? I don't care if you understand hockey. I want you to think about your passion. So I want to ask you a question that I left you with yesterday, the very last slide, about Linda Ellis, the poet, and about that dash. See, we've all got that number there. Sadly, August 11, 2003, that was the other number for Herbie. And that's all you get. You can't take any stuff with you. It's really profound when you think about it. Why are you here today? Why are we all pushing the rock up the hill? Why was I up till 3.30 in the morning editing a book? Because passion, legacies. What do you live for? What do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? It's not too, not too late. Why don't you think about your dash?